Amen. <laughs> Good morning. Don't throw stuff at me, Amanda. <laughs> hey, this works, yeah? Is it working all right? Can you hear me okay? <laughs> Good morning, everybody. Again, wow, I feel like after a word like that and a prayer like that, it's like, amen, we uh, can all be dismissed, but don't go anywhere. You're not excused yet. <laughs> We are going to get right into the Word. Um, now, I know we told you we're going to be starting a new series through the Gospel of John, and we are, just not yet, <laughs> not today. Uh, so I was, um, just a, a lot has happened this week, and uh, to make a long story short, just a chain of events led up to me asking God, you know, what are you doing? What do you, what do you want me to do this Sunday if it's not John right now? And uh, so I was praying for the past few days and God gave me a word to share today, uh, something from Ephesians chapter four. So if you have your Bible, turn to Ephesians. Uh, well, but if you remember while you're turning there, uh, if you've been with us, we went through Ephesians a few months ago or so, right? And um, it was rich, right? It was, who was here for that? We went through the book of Ephesians. Everybody get off your phones. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> it was, um, you know, some of this is going to be familiar to you guys, but, um, and especially to my refuge recovery peeps, because we were in this passage a couple months ago. And honestly, it's because of that, that I sort of was like, you know, Lord, should I really share this, this Sunday? And, you know, can't I teach something else? Like, can you give me something else? And, and God just kind of won the argument, you know, as usual. Go figure. He's God. You know, I don't have much to say uh, when it comes to, you know, God's will. Uh, so turn to your Bibles, Ephesians chapter 4, and, and go ahead and drop down to verse 20. Ephesians 4, 20. It starts like this. But you have not so learned Christ. If indeed you have heard him and have been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus, that you put off concerning your former conduct, the old man which grows corrupt according to the deceitful lusts, and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that you put on the new man which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. Let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your word. I pray that you be our teacher, Holy Spirit. Remove all distractions from our minds, our hearts. Lord, let us see you. Let us focus on you. Let us hear from you. Every one of us that's walked in here with whatever we've walked in here with this morning. We all need you. We need hope. We need answers. We need strength. We need conviction. We need encouragement, Lord. So just bring all that you have for us, Lord, all that your presence brings, Lord, and I thank you so much that you're so faithful. We give you this time. Teach us your word. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. I just wanted to, yeah, with the kids. That was awesome. I love that sound, man. This is just like, I want to go out there. Can I go out there for a while? Um, sounds like they're having fun. Should we, out, should we try to outdo them? I'm just kidding. Anybody? <laughs> Alan says, yeah. Everybody jump up on your tables and shout. <laughs> uh, except one of them's got a wobbly leg there. Don't do it on that one. I don't know which one it is. So, yeah, Alan's got the wobbly leg, he says. Uh, I have a question now. This is, I know it's, uh, what is, I'm like, what month is this, September? I don't even know what month it is. Um, anybody ever made any New Year's resolutions? Anybody, don't, don't lie. You've done it. Come on. I know you have, right? And uh, when I asked this to uh, my refuge recovery peeps uh, a couple months back, it was like we had a good time going over some of the things, some of the New Year's resolutions that we made. Uh, so what were some of the resolutions that you made? Stop smoking. Stop smoking. What was it? Lose weight. Start smoking. Start smoking. Alan said, I love, a little outside the box, but hey, whatever. Did it, did <laughs> Did you achieve your goal, Alan? <laughs> what else? I heard some other stuff. What was that? Move to Long Beach. All right, here you are. There you are, right? <laughs> what else? Come on. Stop cursing. Yeah. I was like, Yosemite Sam. That was one of mine. Read the Bible more. 
New Year's resolutions, and we make them all the time, right? Or even, it doesn't even have to be the beginning of the new year. The new year. It could just be any time, right? Next week, um, that's it, man. I'm done with this. I'm done with that, whatever it is. And I'm going to start this or start that, right? And um, I'm just going to use this example. How about going to the gym? It's one of my favorites, right? I'm going to go to the gym this year. I'm going to be faithful, right? I'm going to eat healthier. I'm going to quit smoking, Cindy said. Make more time for my family, right? Uh, go to church, <laughs> Pray more, read my Bible more, Chris said. Quit drinking, all that stuff. Now let's just take the gym, for example. This is my favorite example, right? Uh, Ryan and I, uh, 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 Lori's son Ryan and I were talking about this late, lately, about this, uh, this lady, this like older lady like in her 70s or something, the video on Facebook. She's like all yoked and like strong and doing all this stuff. And, and we're like, dude, this is like... I feel so embarrassed now, like, I need to get back to the gym, like, this lady's putting me to shame, he's like, me too, and, um, and so, like, I've been going to the gym again every day since I watched that video, because it's like, I'm looking at, I'm like, what's my excuse, but, uh, but what if you have a gym membership, right, and you don't go, right, you don't go, it's paid for, it's, somebody's raising their hand, <laughs> Cindy's like, that's me, it's paid for, but you don't go, so you don't get exercise, right, and so you if you don't, or since you don't exercise, you don't see change, right? You don't get results. Amen? You got to go to the gym and use your membership to get the results that you want. Amen? Now, my question is, why would following Jesus be any different? Why would following Jesus be any different? Let's look at what Paul says here in Ephesians 4, verse 20. He says, but, don't you love passages that start out with but? But you have not so learned Christ. What is he talking about? Why am I starting there where he says, but you? But you, yeah, you. Why am I starting there? Well, Paul's referring to what he has just said in the previous verses. Uh, so back to train up a little bit and check out verse 17 through 19 really quick. He had just said this. Keeping in mind, okay, really quick. Keeping in mind that he's talking to people. And you know if you were with us through our study in Ephesians. He was talking to people who were once into some seriously ungodly pagan practices and they worshiped this uh, Artemis or this Diana, the so-called goddess and the, the temple of Diana or Artemis was known as one of the great wonders of the world, right? And a lot of idolatry went on in this place, uh, in this temple, and a lot of money was made um, in the process and it was kind of like the thing that identified the Ephesians right we worship Diana or Artemis and she was also um uh um or Diana also called Artemis and we worship her the goddess of nature or like the the virgin goddess of childbirth whatever that means um and and of women right and she's like supposedly the twin sister of Apollo and um told another story but this temple and they would say, this is where we do what we do, and so this is who we are, right? And so, sadly, it was all kinds of bad. It was all kinds of bad. And you can read in Acts chapter 19 about when Paul passes through there and um, everything that happens. Actually, a riot breaks out in Ephesus. Um, but uh, go ahead and jot that down for a reference if you want to do your homework, Acts 19. Uh, but they had a temple dedicated to her where all their practices, all their worship of this false goddess took place, and it was a lot of dirty, nasty stuff, right? And, and Paul had just taken the first three chapters of this book, or what we know as, you know, the prior content, prior to chapter four, we know as Ephesians 4, Paul had been writing up to this point, he had been explaining to them that now that they had come to Christ, uh, they had placed their faith in Jesus, uh, they were that they were now the temple of God, and you've heard Chris and I say this uh, over the past handful of months. Whenever we talk about the temple and the place where God's Spirit dwells, and then us as Christians being that place now where the God's Holy Spirit dwells, and we are the temple of of God, and so they were new in Christ. And he explained everything that they had been given by grace, right? And um, they had been saved by grace through faith. There was nothing that they did um, to earn it. And all the wonderful blessings and all the riches uh, in the spirit that belong to uh, them in Jesus now, right? And how lost they once were and how now they've been found and how, um, how far away they used to be from God. And now they've been brought near, right? 
by the precious blood of Christ, right? He's, he's brought them near into this intimate relationship with him, right? And that everything in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, Paul said in chapter 1, it belongs to them because they belong to God now. They are his children, and, the, and this now is their identity. This now is their identity. Their identity used to be in that old temple of Diana or Artemis and their worship of her. And now he's saying to them, no, 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 no. You used to chant, great is Diana of the Ephesians, right? It says that in Acts 19. And, and you guys have heard me say this before, and I stole this from Peyton. He, she, they're saying, Paul is saying to them, now your, your, what you shout, what you chant, what you proclaim should be great is Jesus of heaven, Right? So he says, forget that temple where you worship the fake goddess. You guys now are the temple of the living God. And he prays for them in chapter 3 that they would have the eyes of their understanding opened, right? And that um, they would uh, be strengthened with might from God uh, in their inner man, right? And that after all that, here in chapter 4, he started telling them, okay, in light of all this, in light of everything God's done, chapters 1 through 3, God, everything God's given you in light of everything Jesus has done for you, his life, death, resurrection, in light of your new identity, who you really are now in him, here's how you walk. Here's how you want to be living now, right? He says, here's how to follow him. And so he goes into, you know, he'd been saying that they should walk worthy of the calling to which they've been called and uh, to walk in love, to walk in the light and to walk in uh, unity, Right. And so to live differently is the whole idea. Live totally differently than they had been, <laughs> than they had been living. And um, so, but I love how Paul tells them as he writes on, he explains, and in all of his letters he explains, that this can only be done in the power of the Holy Spirit. You can't muster this up from within yourself. I'm going to do better. I'm going to follow him, follow after him harder, and ooh, I'm going to do it this time. New Year's resolutions don't work when it comes to obeying Christ. Yes, we play, we make a decision and we put forth a little effort, but the Holy Spirit supplies us the power to live it out. So he writes to these who once used to be called Gentiles. A Gentile was anyone who's not a Jew. They were alienated from the worship community. Anybody ever been there? I have, that's why I got this shirt. But now these guys, now they're in. They are family in Christ now, okay? So he says to them in verse 17, this I say, chapter 4, verse 17, this I say, therefore, and testify in the Lord that you should no longer walk as the rest of the Gentiles walk in the futility of their mind, having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the blindness of their heart, who, being past feeling, have given themselves over to lewdness, to work all uncleanness with greediness. He says, this is not you, but you have not so learned Christ. Old you. There's a new you now, okay? This is not you now. Verse 21, if indeed you have heard him, and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus. Now, I want us to see something here that we might miss if we don't break it down really quick. You have heard him and have been taught by him. Check this out. Jesus said in Matthew 7, you don't have to turn there, but he says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise, right? Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Okay, though the rain comes, the torrents, the floodwaters, all this stuff comes, it rises up, beats, the winds beat on that house, it won't collapse because it's built on solid rock, or on bedrock is another translation. But anyone who hears my teaching, he said, and doesn't obey it is, opposite of wise, foolish, like a person who builds a house on sand. And when it rains, the floods come, the wind and the rain and all this stuff beats against that house, that house will collapse. It will collapse with a mighty crash, it says. And so, I feel like we also bang on the tables when they say it. The mighty crash. But when Jesus, but don't flip the tables over. <laughs> when Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his 
teaching, for he taught with real authority, quite unlike their teachers of religious law. So, back to our passage. So, if you have heard him and been taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. The truth is in Jesus. The truth is in Jesus, right? Jesus said in John 14, 6, I am the way, I am the truth, and the life. And I say this often, but I'll say it again, because in order for us to make the connection in our brain, right? In order for us to make this connection, uh, which it's critical that we make this connection, we want to see something that Jesus said in John chapter 6. I repeat this a lot, especially on Monday nights, because it's super important. And Jesus said, it is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. And then he says, the words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. So having been taught by him in whom all truth is found, right? And by the truth, the Holy Spirit ministers life, new life new life and he teaches us how to walk in that newness of life that his word gives new life so he says that you've been taught to what put off the old man put on the new man or woman and uh the the picture here is like taking off you know, a shirt or a jacket, clothing, taking off the old, worn out, dirty, put it down, put it down, putting on something new, right? I I hope I'm doing this right. Can you, can you see my jacket, my new jacket? It's inside out. Oh no. Hey, you felt me out, Alan. Putting on my new threads. You got to put off that old, you know, throw that old shirt in the dirt, whatever, you know, and put on a new one. Remember how we just talked about having a gym membership and not using it, right? Not exercising. Imagine a guy released from prison, right? And, but he's still wearing his prison-issued clothing. Right? He, and, he, and he still acts like he's locked up. Not as a free man. If this was someone you knew personally, what would you say to him? The heck are you doing, man? <laughs> All right? Put on some new clothes, hey, amen? Hey, let me take you shopping. Dude. Like, I mean, you need something? Take off, you know, put on some street clothes, as we say, Right? You know, didn't you get your dress out? <laughs> but, um, not that I know about any of this stuff, but anyway, I'm going to be telling on myself a lot today. Uh, so this phrase, put off, right, and put on here is the same idea as putting off or putting on uh, a set of clothes. And so the key implication of the idea is to change into a uh, different kind of um, conduct, a different kind of behavior, different kind of manner of living. So... Um, And I like how Guzik said, even as putting on different clothes will change the way you think about yourself, see yourself, you know, you look in the mirror, I look pretty nice, you know, even so putting on a different conduct will start to change your attitude. Um, Now, like, you know, in like the program, they say like, fake it till you make it. And it works for a little while. But like, well, like I said, without the power of the Holy Spirit, there's really no real change. But um, this means that we shouldn't wait to feel like the new man before we put on the new man, though. Does that make sense? Like, don't wait till, you know, I'm just not feeling it today. Well, you might never f- be feeling it. You know, you, if, if you're just sitting there going, I'm waiting for the new man to show up. Just praying to God, trusting in the Lord. Yeah, I don't know. I don't feel different. Well, walk in it, man. Take a step in that direction, right? But anyway, so guys, sometimes putting off or taking off the old dirty shirt, right, means breaking up with our past. Amen? Am I talking to anybody in here? It means, man, let go. I got to let go of some stuff. I got to shut doors on some people, and it might hurt. You might have known these people all your life. If you're in recovery like me, I've had to do that. Some people, not strong enough to be hanging with them in the beginning. Over time, I got stronger. I felt like I could go back and visit and say, hey, want to come to this meeting? Want to come to church with me? Because before, when I wasn't strong enough, I'd get sucked back into the world. What happened, right? 
And so dying to the old self, letting it go to follow Jesus. Jesus isn't merely, you know, added to our old life, right? He's not, let me, let me add Jesus to my collection of trinkets or whatever, you know, like a rabbit's foot, a good luck charm. No, the old life dies and he becomes um, our new life. He literally becomes our new life. You have not so learned Christ. Check that out. You have not so learned Christ. The repetition of the idea shows uh, that part of putting off the old person um, and putting on the new person is learning and growing uh, in that knowledge. What I mean is, he said, you have heard him and have been taught by him as the truth is in Jesus and be renewed in the spirit of your mind, right? You guys have heard me say that our Christian life or our walk with the Lord has to go beyond head knowledge, right? It has to go way beyond head knowledge because it's so much more than that. Because having a bunch of information in my head, right? Having a bunch of information in my head does not change my life. You know, I can know, I can say, I know, I know, I know. I used to do that and people would preach the gospel to me on the street. Yeah, I know, I know, I know, man. What's, leave me alone. Yeah, I believe already. Jeez, what's wrong with you, man? Like, I, yeah, I get it. I'm going to heaven. What's, what, what else do I need to do? I didn't understand walking in that new identity that I was now, uh, you know, in Christ. But it's so much more than having a bunch of information in your head. If the information just sits there, it does nothing, right? Just sits up in my head, knowing Jesus um, is where it's at, but that knowledge is intimate and personal. It's, it's, it's something that we live out. So, you know, and even knowing about Jesus is so much more than just your average information. I don't get me wrong, but if we don't apply what we know to our lives, uh, then it can have the same effect as having that gym membership and not rolling up to the gym. You know, just, yeah, I got a, I'm a, I got a membership at LA Fitness or 24 or whatever, you know, and like, all I'm doing is like, I'm just feeling more out of shape and gaining weight and just feeling more tired because I'm not going. Or it's like getting out of prison and still wearing that prison issue, you know, those prison clothes. You know what I mean? Now, we need this head knowledge to, we need the knowledge to influence our way of thinking. I need this new information to influence my thinking. Um, but, you know, the way I think about everything has to change now, though right? The way we think about it, everything has to change. And the Word of God does that. I cannot flip a switch. I cannot force myself to be different. The Word of God does this, creates this change, but not just in the sense of knowing facts, but the ability to, uh, to set our minds on the right things, to set our minds on the right things. And in fact, when we get into the Gospel of John in chapter one, right away, we'll see this next week. We're going to see that um, the, that in the Word is life. So much more than just life lessons or uh, keys to living a good Christian life. You know, life itself is in the Word. A little spoiler alert, we're going to learn that Jesus is the Word in human flesh. But we'll get there next week. But when we set our minds on what's true and right, and when that's a constant thing for, for you and I, it's something that we're practicing, then we're going to find ourselves growing. We're going to find ourselves growing. We're going to notice uh, a change, and others are going to notice that we're changing too. You know, hey, what gives, man? What's up with that? I, I just, oh, you didn't hear, I, I got saved, man. I'm, I'm following Jesus. Um, what? Yeah, man. Do you know him? Because <laughs> he changes everything. Um, Romans 12, 2 says, and do not be conformed to this world, but be what? Transformed. You guys are good Bible students. Transformed by what? The renewing of your big hint. I'm going like that. <laughs> Minds. So the Ephesians here, they learned Christ, not only learning about Jesus, but learning him. This means a living, it's been said, a living, abiding knowledge of Jesus will keep us from the kind of sinful conduct Paul's been speaking of. So just knowing about Jesus isn't enough to keep us pure. 
And um, surprise, surprise, I'm going to quote Charles Spurgeon again. He said, so if you want to know the Lord Jesus Christ, you must live with him. First, he must himself speak to you, and afterwards you must abide in him. He must be the choice companion of your morning hours. He must be with you throughout the day. And with him, you must also close the night. And as often as you may wake during the night, you must say, when I awake, I am still with thee. When I awake, I'm still with thee. Spurgeon was quoting Psalm 139, uh, verses 17 and 18, where it says, How precious are, precious are your thoughts about me, O God. They cannot be numbered. I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. And when I wake up, they're still with me. And if Jesus is with you, which he is, if you are his, right? You have God, the Holy Spirit, living inside of you as a believer in Christ, which is another thing Paul told the Ephesians. Uh, the moment they believed in Jesus, God, the Holy Spirit, came to take up residence inside of them. And the same is true for you and I, right? So uh, when we place our faith in Jesus, meaning what he did, his life, his perfect life in my place, his death on that cross in my place, and his resurrection. He is alive and offers that forgiveness of sin, new life, and the power to uh, walk in that new life. Does that make sense? So if that is you, you have done that. That is who you are. That is where you stand. And, and so uh, God the Father, God the Son, Jesus, and God the Holy Spirit are, are one, right? Jesus is God. So... If, or better yet, since, since Jesus is with you, okay, he will supply the strength to put off the, um, you know, to do away with, to throw away the old man and put on the new man or woman, the new person. The Bible says man a lot, just talking about people in general. Um, so, like the guy getting out of prison, you know, you know, he gets a new set of clothes freely provided by his friend or whatever on the street. That's like Jesus. That, hey, you've got a new identity. You've got some new, some new threads. You've, you've got everything. It's so much more than that, though. It's an inside job. Uh, speaking of prison, um, so I told you I was going to tell on myself today. <laughs> um, there was a time when, uh, uh, believe it or not, uh, I, I haven't always been a perfect little boy, um, so <laughs> believe it or not, I haven't always been this polished and awesome, you know, awesome, yeah, everybody's laughing now, um, everybody that really knows me up in here knows, like, <laughs> there's, I'm under construction, and uh, it's been, I've been one of God's special projects, um, anybody <laughs> relate to that, <laughs> you feel like God's special needs child, you know, like problem child, or, you know, just, oh, uh, just like, you know, the, the one that you're the reason why God like is packed with so much patience because like you're always just bumping your head and stuff well you know even Paul I can't wait to get to heaven and tell Paul like you know when you said you're the chief of sinners Paul no no yeah maybe of your day but I'm the chief of sinners of my day because man and I know like a lot of people can relate but so um when I was that other old person not in Christ um I was into a lot of bad stuff, and um, I paid a lot of heavy consequences for it. You know, drugs, alcohol, uh, gang violence, and um, just all sorts of things that, um, that destroy a person's life. I was in all of it. Um, seeking fulfillment, seeking to run from my problems, um, and so um, not to get too into that part of it and all of the things that I did, um, I would go to, um, I, was, I went to jail, I went to hospitals, um, I was homeless, in a prison several times. Um, and one of these times uh, when I was getting kind of towards like the tail end, or should have been, the tail end of my stint on parole, um, and uh, I had what you call uh, a, 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 a pal warrant. Doesn't mean I was a pal of the state. Like, the state's my pal. My buddy, you know, it's parolee at large. I had one of these warrants. And, uh, and I, I took off, man. <laughs> I bolted out to uh, another state. 
And uh, just like, I was like, man, I want to transfer. I'm telling my parole agent on the phone, I want to transfer, dude. Like, I just, I need to get out of here. And I thought change of scenery was what was going to do it, right? Do it for me. It was going to change me, right? And um, yeah, it, at least it would help. He's like, I'm not giving any passes. I'm not giving any transfers. I'm not doing any of that. Just get your butt down here, and uh, we'll talk about that later. You're almost done. Like, you only have several months left, and you'll be fine. Blah, blah, blah. I don't want to hear it. He was just like, wah, wah, wah. Miss me with that. And I'm like, okay, I'm doing that. And then I finally go, you know what? Uh, later, I hung up the phone. I remember it like it was yesterday. It was a pay phone in front of my favorite liquor store. They called it my office. And uh, I just hung up the phone, and I was just like, I'm, and I just stood there for a minute. I was like, man, I, I, I got to go. I got to get the heck out. I was in Orange County on parole. I'm like, I got to get out of Orange County. So I go, I go out of state. Um, a lot of reasons behind why I left and where, where I went to, but um, I went and, you know, and, and, and I chased the girl that I was, you know, uh, into that at the time. She was one of my best friends, my homegirl I grew up with, and, um, you know, we happened to have a child together, and so I went out there. I'm like, I'm going to change everything now. This is cool. Like, get a new life going, and one little minor detail, I'm still on parole in California. Oops. So I go out there. She's wanted to. She's on the run. She'd been out there for a minute, and Everything's fine. I've I'm, I'm got a job, making some money. We're doing the thing. We're being a little family. Everything's cool. And then I meet, I meet a neighbor that likes to get high and tells me about how cheap this, the, the meth is in this town next, next town over. And, I'm, and my cranks start turning. Oh, my gosh. Like, I'm working too hard. I'm working so hard, and I'm getting this paycheck. I mean, it's not bad, but, I mean, I don't have to work that hard. If I just sell, find this stuff and sell it, that was my mentality a lot of the time. <laughs> this is too hard. I'm going to go back to selling drugs. Bad idea. Start doing the drugs, too. One night, you know, on the door. Uh-oh, it's really late. We're getting high. Uh -oh. <laughs> Please don't open that door. We're, we're telling the mom. And, and long story short, they bust us, man. And... They, 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 I'm hiding in the bathroom, and they, they get her, and then they find, like, my Chino ID on the shelf. They're like, oh, where's this guy? And I'm like, oh, dang. They figure out I'm in the bathroom. They get me, extradited back to California. While I'm in California, okay, this is proof that, like, moving, changing location did not change me inside, right? I found the trouble, and I got brought back. Kind of breathed a sigh of relief. Fine, I'm, ta I'm taking care of this. I'm finally, I'm getting this over with. Fine, cool. Thank you, Lord. Started picking up my Bible again, started reading the Word again, started praying, started going to chapel uh, while I was in there, and, and I felt so close to the Lord, like nothing could shake my relationship with God. Nothing. Nothing was going to get me off the path. I was doing this thing. I was living it. You cannot. I was feeling His power. I was really experiencing the Holy Spirit empowering me to live differently, even in the midst of where... You know, you kind of, when you're in there, like, you got to kind of be who you were on the street. And, and it's just like this battle of, like, I was like, man, I'm not trying to follow the politics in here. I was never down for that. I, I, I'm who I am. I, I don't, I need to follow your rules. I'm following Jesus. And so, and beyond that struggle, I had made a promise while I was in that other state to somebody really close to me that if I ever saw this person that did them wrong, I was going to take care of them, if you know what I might be saying. And it'd be really easy for me to do that while I was in. It's probably easier in jail and prison to take another person's life than it is to get away with it on the street. And I meant that. Look this person in the eye, made a promise, you have my word. You have my word. They had robbed his house and stolen family heirlooms and all this stuff. And I knew who the person was, but he didn't really know me. So I bump into this guy in the yard one day. They always wanted to, hey, man, somebody from your city, you know, I want to introduce you to this homie. And I'm like, oh, okay. And I go out there. And while I'm shaking the guy's hand, he says his name. And I'm like, I almost crushed his hand. When I heard him say his name, I'm like, um, I got to go take a walk. So I, I'm doing some laps. And, and I bump into another homeboy. And I'm, I start explaining, like, I'm in a really bad spot right now, man. And so to make a really long story short, these guys came alongside of me. They seen me struggling. And they just ministered to me. And I sat there and I just sat there with the Lord just in this moment. Like I was so, everything in me wanted to go and put my hands on this guy. Everything so bad. Like I'm shaking. I was shaking and I was crying. That's how upset I was. That's how angry and how 
what a battle I was in. My whole body was shaken, and I was like on fire. I was heated, like, and, uh, and I was just in tears. I didn't know what to do. And the guy's like, hey, man, you know, one thing that we really respect about you is you're about this thing. You don't just preach it. You don't just talk it. You don't just walk around with a Bible. You live this thing. And a lot of people look up to you, man. And I'm like, I know. And inside I'm going, yes, yes, this is my heart. I want to obey Jesus. And I want to walk in that newness of life. That's the old me would have already gone after this dude without asking questions, without an explanation, nothing. And I would have gotten away with it, probably. Who knows? But now I'm this new person, this new man in Christ, right? I had to make a decision, a really, really tough one. I mean, we're talking I was going through it bad. Like, you ever been so angry at someone? So angry. So, I mean, so heated. So just, you got to, you like, someone duct taped me to a chair or a bed because I'm about to do something stupid. That was me. I was, you know, before I started growing in Jesus, I was a rageaholic. I didn't talk. <laughs> I just reacted. Then maybe I would ask you while you were laying on the ground, like, why you said that, you know? I'm like, oh, by the way, since you're bleeding to death, do you know Jesus? You know, that was the kind of, like, stupid stuff I did. But um, I was immature. But in this particular situation, I had to make a decision. I had to ask myself. I felt like the Holy Spirit just showed up, sat across from that little table in that yard from me where the homie was sitting. And, like, I felt like Jesus himself just said, who made that promise? The old you or the new you? And I went, mm. <laughs> ouch. Said, and, and, but it was like the light bulb went on. That was the old me making promises according to the old manner of living, the old way I used to live, the things I used to do, <clears throat> excuse me, that I do not do anymore. And so I decided, but I'm still going in that turmoil. I mean, how many of you know what I'm talking about? Like, you make good decisions, but you still don't feel awesome about it sometimes, right? You're like, I'm still going through it. I'm still feeling, you know, I'm still anxious, I'm still whatever. It didn't disappear, it didn't, the feeling didn't dissolve right away. But, the, but when I made that decision, okay, I am going to do what's right, which is nothing. And the guy never knew how close he came. I had no clue. And I just prayed, and over the course of the next several hours, that God flooded my heart and my mind with his peace. And I felt the anxiety leave the you know that shaking I'm like, I was calm and I and I felt like the Lord just spoke to me said you know what I got you and I'm pleased with that you know and I just felt like my heavenly father going that's my boy that's my boy and then all these other thoughts hit me like man this could have been all kinds of bad like I could have been I was only doing a violation I was only going to be there for a handful of months get out and get off parole soon but I could have gotten life for murdering this guy. I could have never went home. Not to mention the guilt and the shame and all that. So anyway, put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. I was now this new man, the new person. The new person is the new creation that we become the, the, the moment we believe in Jesus. That's how fast it happens. You are a new creation in Christ. 2 Corinthians 5.17 in the New Living Translation says, this means that anyone who belongs to Christ has become a new person. The old life is what? Gone. The old life is gone. I had to really let that sink in. That old life's gone. That old, that old mic's gone. The new, a new life has begun. Let me ask you a question. Have you forgotten who you are in Christ? Are you still wearing your uh, prison-issued T-shirt <laughs> and pants and those lame shoes? <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> I got a witness up in here. Everybody's like, who is this dude in the pulpit talking about killing people in prison? Don't run. <laughs> old me. <laughs> You're looking at a new man. Or have you taken off the old, Right? You take it off the old. I got to take this stuff off and put it. Man, get it far from me. This is, it stinks. It's dirty. It's, it's disgusting. I don't want that anymore. But you have 
put off the old, but you haven't put on the new. You're just kind of like, okay, what do I do now? What do I do now? What do I put on? I mean, you're naked, man. <laughs> you know what I mean? Let's get some new threads on you. Quick. Take a look at the last few verses with me to close it out. Uh, verse 25, and I'm going to read through verse 32. Therefore, putting away lying, let each of one of you speak the truth with his neighbor. For we are members of one another. Be angry. This is the part that, you know, I really appreciated this part. Be angry. It's okay to be angry. And do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your wrath. Nor give place to the devil. 28. Let him who stole steal no longer. But rather let him labor, working with his hands what is good, that he may have something to give him who has need. Do you see the contrast here now? You stole, don't steal no more. Work with your hands now, give. Don't steal, give, right? Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth. Uh, not saying no names, but somebody shouted that out earlier. No cussing no more. New Year's resolution. Let no corrupt word proceed out of your mouth, but what is good and uh, for necessary edification, in other words, for building people up, that it may impart grace to the hearers. Don't be going around cussing people out and talking trash and dirty and crazy and impart grace to those who are listening, right? Verse 30, and do not grieve, this is the point, do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, wrath, anger, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice and be kind to one another, tender-hearted. How many of you know that in that moment I was going through that, like I was having a really hard time being tender-hearted? <laughs> kind and like loving and, oh yes, I just want to bless this guy. No. Be kind. That do not grieve the Holy Spirit thing got to me, man. Be kind to one another. Verse 32. Tenderhearted. Forgiving one another. Forgiving one another. Right? Even as God in Christ forgave you. Put off the old man and put on the new man, which was created according to God in true righteousness and holiness. God, the righteous judge, because of uh, when you place your faith in Jesus and the, the sacrifice he uh, took upon himself, he became for you and I on that cross where God's wrath for sin was poured out on him in our place, instead of you and I, when we, when we, when we place our faith in him and, and that what he did, God, the righteous judge, imputes his righteousness uh, to you for your faith. For your faith, which his word gives you, by the way. Faith comes by hearing and hearing through the word. Shout if you got a through the word t-shirt on. <laughs> when I forgave that guy in prison... It was because, as verse 32 says, because God in Christ forgave me. I had determined to put on the new man while I was in there. I didn't want to wait till I got out. I didn't, I didn't want to wait to hit the gate to change my ways. The rubber needed to meet the road now. Because I might, I might have still had my physical prison clothes on, right, at the time. But inside, in here, in my heart... And in my mind, in my spirit, in my soul, I was already set free. I was already free because of Jesus. And uh, maybe you're here today and right now you're thinking, you know, that kind of freedom sounds really, really good. They had these Bibles that was called Free on the Inside on the cover and it had like a picture of like a you know, like a fist and a wrist, like the shackles breaking off like this. And I thought, that's cool, man. Like, free on the inside. Like, I'm in here, but I'm still free. But there was so much more meaning to it that I didn't grasp right away. Talk about freedom on this inside. This inside, in here. Mike Bonomo's heart and mind. Free on the inside. 
then what I do flows out of that and, and my perspective on all my circumstances changes dramatically. So maybe you're thinking that's the kind of freedom I need, man. In Luke chapter 4, it says, he, Jesus went to Nazareth where he had been brought up and on the Sabbath day, he went to the synagogue as was his custom. It says he stood up and he read the scroll of the, uh, the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was handed to him. And unrolling it, he found the place where it is written, the spirit of the Lord is on me because he has anointed me to proclaim good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners and recovery of sight for the blind, to set the oppressed free, to claim the year of the Lord's favor. Then he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, sat down. The eyes of everyone in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began by saying to them, today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing. He has sent me to proclaim freedom for the prisoners. Freedom for the prisoners. Sometimes we build the, our own prison around ourselves, brick by brick, piece by piece, wall by wall. And we shove everybody out. We don't want to let anybody in. And then when we're in there and it's dark and it's cold and we're alone, we go, where'd everybody go? When I shove them out, I built this around myself. I was talking with, this, uh, with Lori about this a while back at the barbecue, you know, and then somebody has to come away and chisel chisel at that brick and then a little piece falls off and boom, a little beam of light comes in, right? It might hit you in the eyes and you're like, oh, that's bright. Hey, oh, it's exposing what I'm doing here in the darkness a little bit. I don't know if I want any more of that, but it's warm. I feel the warmth and I can see a little bit what's going on. I need more of that. You invite people in our situation and, and let them, you know, help us chisel away at these walls we put up. And, and that's a whole other sermon, but I'd like to... Um, invite the worship team to come back up if you would but um, while they're coming up here Christian if you are a Christian today are you a prisoner to your own sin to that old you that just keeps rearing his or her ugly head you know I think that's how it goes but anyway it's like you know that thing man you know that thing that keeps coming up you and God know it you need to know Jesus has proclaimed and secured your freedom. Repent and believe the gospel today that his life, death, and resurrection was enough. It was enough. And if you're here today and you've been a prisoner all your life, maybe. You're a slave to guilt, maybe. Guilt, shame. And the weight of the things that you've done and of the things that have been done to you. I was in that prison. You've built your own prison around yourself. You've shut everyone out, and you're crying out, doesn't anybody care? Who can set me free? Come to Jesus today, and he'll forgive you for everything. Everything. No matter what you've done, it doesn't matter. I don't care how bad, I don't care if you were me in that situation and you did kill the guy. He can forgive you of that. And give you the power to forgive those who have wronged you. And listen, give you the power to break free, break out of that prison and walk in a new direction, live life differently. And there may be something you're thinking, yeah, I, I kind of believe that. This, th he can do this, this, and that. But this thing, man, I just don't know. You don't know how long I've been dealing with this. You don't know how, how, how deep in bondage I am, this thing. You wouldn't understand. Maybe not. But try me. But more importantly, try and see if Jesus doesn't understand. Jesus knows and understands. But the thing of, about Jesus is he was in all points tempted as we are yet without sin. So he could be the sacrifice for us on our behalf. Come to him today and let him set you free. We're going to pray and we're going to sing one last song. And while the worship team is singing, I'm going to invite anybody that needs to come to the altar today. 
needs to lay something down. You need Jesus to set you free, Christian or not. You're a Christian and you know you're in bondage. You want to be set free. I'm going to invite you to come down here and pray with us. And if you have never asked Jesus to forgive you of your sin, never placed your faith in him, what he did for you on the cross, I'm here to tell you he is alive today. And if you were the only person on planet earth when he came, he still would have came for you to set you free, to forgive you of your sin, to make you right with God, to bring you into this relationship with him and to walk you through this life that he has planned for you. So let's pray. Father God, thank you so much for your word.